For all of your insurance needs, look no further than our primary sponsor, Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. The ATX OG has been insuring Austin for over three decades. And get this, Jim Saxton is a Longhorn legacy. He is the son of the late, great James Saxton, who was a Heisman finalist. Be sure to give him a call or better yet, visit his website, saxtoninsurance.com and tell him that the stories inside the Man Cave Boys recommended you. I sure have missed this guy. I'm going to go ahead and admit it. Borderline man crush right here, Wills. It's been a while. I mean, we're already on installment number eight, but where the hell have you been? That's a good question. Uh, I, we were talking offline, but the the eighth grade to freshman year transition is with sports. I'm like, how can I get out of it? But we've got seven on seven finishing uh which by the way the trojans the freshman trojans are six or five oh and one varsity six and oh and it's our last weekend this weekend but i mean wow. this tuesday but then we've got northwest pony we've got anderson freshman baseball they're all starting coach mose on monday for oh. strength and conditioning Wake well, your ass up. I agree. Well, the good thing is once I can get it, it's like you're pushing them, get them to the, get the high school coaches to do it all. And then you're, you're good. Uh, but that I've had to do all the organizing for a lot of this and it is, I'm ready to be retired. Well, you've been MIA for a good reason. He, and, you know, Wills is a man of his community. And a, and a man of the kids and up and coming Trojans. By the way, for those watching other places, the Trojans, Anderson High School here in Austin, um, they've had a really, really good spring sports season. Yeah. Um, for boys and girls, men, women, however you want to refer to the gender. Um, collectively, one of the best springs I've ever, ever, ever witnessed out of Anderson High School. And by the way, this installment brought to you by our guy, Jim Saxon, State Farm Insurance Agency. I got to tell you, Will, so I bought a new truck about eight weeks ago. Okay. Call Jimmy. He t told me to call his guy at the office. Been insured by them, full coverage. And that guy handled it, submitted it to me digitally. I was fully covered on the new vehicle within a half hour. It's fantastic customer service. That is. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you everything. Jimmy Saxton worked for Skip Crow. You know Skip? I know the name. So he worked for Skip's Ranch the year before I did. We both worked in the summer. Cattle Ranch in Colorado. Can you imagine? <laughs> Pretty great. Oh, he, Jimmy's told me that. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, the parallels. It's all right. That's right. Okay. Pretty good. He said y'all grew up a lot because of that trip. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Which I've, I've regressed since then, which is good. <laughs> well, the rumors are true. That's right. So right now, as we speak, this is happening. Yep. College baseball, regional madness, June madness. We want to give it a good label. Austin's no stranger to this. I've, I've lost track. I'd say about four dozen times, maybe 50 plus UT has hosted a regional. I think this is the second best, if not the one B best time of year for uh, sports in general. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this regional field with Texas, Air Force, Louisiana Tech, and Dallas Baptist? That's a great question because somebody asked me today who I want to win between Louisiana Tech and Dallas Baptist. And that, I don't know the answer because they're both – They we always play these re – give me – I remember the year we played Connecticut State. Yeah. Give me those northern teams any day of the week. Dallas Baptist is always going to be good, and I bet really? Louisiana Tech's good. The good thing is they both got to throw their ace today, you'd think. And if they can – we're going to face whoever their number two is, which is always good. But 
that you're right. The regional time in Austin is about it's it's hard to beat. And it, I remember the old eight team regionals. Yeah, yeah. Would host, and you could get the U Haul out there. I mean, it was Fun. about as good as it gets. One time, not to bore everybody with a story, but UCLA was playing Southwest Missouri State. Okay, and it was the night game. Texas had played in the morning. We were in college. We had a U Haul, and we said, "Let's go back out there and watch." So it's UCLA, and so there's probably maybe 1,500 at the yeah. end, if that. But it's a night game. It's a long game, and we start giving it to the UCLA center fielder. I mean, we're letting him have it over and over, all in his warm-up, whatever. And so the right fielder, I didn't even notice, but he starts backing up, getting closer to the wall. And the left fielder, he's a le- the center fielder, he, he's a left-hander, and he's thrown with them, pretending he's not paying attention. Well, then about the third throw, he sails it into the U-Haul. And it's a perfect throw because it's right at our feet. You know, you can't – there's nothing you can do. And it, we all – I mean, it was a fantastic move on his part. I think I remember you guys as a youngster seeing that. Was that about 1988 maybe? <laughs> That's – an egregious comment. I was in 1988. I was four, but I wasn't four. But I was 13 years old. Okay, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my God! The only uh, I have several regional stories, but you know we want to keep this fluid and moving. Yeah. The one that I will tell you: the 87 regional. It came down to Houston and Texas. And Houston was beating Texas in the championship game yeah. to go to Omaha. This is before the Super Regionals. A two-and-a-half-hour rain delay. Thunderstorms. That's when they had them back in May. You yeah. Know, Memorial Day around here. Yeah. A little stormy. Yeah. Usually. And then t- to make a little uh, analogy or cliche, the floodgates opened after the uh, yeah. rain delay. Houston had a good team, old – Bragg Stockton, the legendary yeah. coach at U of H. Yeah. Texas ended up winning 13 to 4. They finished third in the college or fourth in the college world series that year. Ty Harrington. Yeah. On that they had a great team. Great um, team. But yeah, that two and a half hours. I cannot remember. I remember I was going to Martin Junior High and uh, my mom picked us up, some buddies, and we all went. And then I couldn't find my buddies while well, I started to get to know the wild bunch. Yeah. A lot of them have all passed on to uh-huh. you know, greater places. But, yeah, that was one of the better – not as good as your story. You bet. You know, being in the eighth grade. So, one thing that I know you're a part of as far as UT athletics, we all know name, image, likeness is a big deal. It, it's part of college athletics for good. It's going to change. But Occupy Left Field, those great people, Mark Pena, I, there's a list as long of these great people who have started that back in – Oh, nine. Well, a foundation, NIL foundation was created. Do you know a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a, I mean, that's a good, the, the good thing about that one, honestly, is baseball, you know, you're really separating. I think, I think football now and maybe basketball has become a billionaire's game yeah. for NIL or, you get real – I mean, Nick Saban wasn't wrong talking about NIL uh, in that you've got guys like Bijan. I mean, that's – he's getting real deals. Right. They yeah. People want him. And then you have collectives and things like that for – but really you've got universities that I won't name but that have two billionaires that are just paying, paying guys. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's legal – but Occupy Left Field Foundation is great in that baseball, you know, it's it's not as prevalent mm-hmm. in – and these guys, you know, somebody made a comment the other day about NIL that, I mean, these guys need money. Yeah. Like they, they can't work outside of – they're training 100% of the time, and yes, they get an education, but – so, you know, you got to go eat at, you know, Wally's or whatever. 
That's not a bad place. That's right. So it, it makes sense, but it's a great, great idea. And it's so unique what they've done with that whole left field, with the cannon there, with everything, with the players, the relationship. I mean, that's been a neat thing about baseball is the relationship those guys have with the fans. It really is personal. It's a lot of fun. And they know before the game, the, uh, the shot – of uh, oh my God, help me out here! Fireball, fireball shot. Usually the father of the starting pitcher uh, does the toast to everybody, and you everybody takes that little they hand out shots of fireball. Right, but it goes. That's just a small example. But what they've done, and it's playing off what you said. Uh, they're in their infant stages. They had an event here in town at uh, Matt's El Rancho's the other night, yep. and you know what Will said is. Very accurate. College baseball is one of those. It doesn't look like it, but not. There's not many programs like Texas. No facility, the money. I mean, TCU, A and M, LSU's. All of them have great. Even Dallas Baptist has great facilities. But eleven point seven scholarships. Right. And has to be divided up from thirty five to forty guys. That's right. Somehow. So, Drew Stubbs, former Longhorn, great. He was one of the guys out there. And now that's what I'm going to tell you, but there's a first, there's going to be a, a, I'm going to put together this first of a short minute, minute long two part series about Occupy Left Field Foundation. And Drew is going to be a part of it. This is kind of a, a, a tease, if you will, of what Occupy Left Field Foundation is all about. To integrate a 501c3 component to it, make it a charitable donation. Um, give money and benefits to some of these local organizations while compensating the players, I think is a brilliant idea. Um, I think it is necessary for the University of Texas to keep up with their peer schools and their competitors. Sums it up. Basically what you said, I mean, where do you see this? Do you see the gray area staying as it is now or will this only grow, but there will be more parameters. I don't uh, Well, here's the deal. I don't know how the problem is. It's a state legislated run. Each state is individually mandating it. So for a corporate body, the NCAA, they really can't do anything. Mm. I, and, I, uh, you know, I think they're getting rid of they being the NCAA some of these limitations on coaches because they can't police it. Right. And so there's going to be a period where this stuff keeps growing, which I think the Occupy Left Field Foundation is doing stuff exactly right, that they're going to give money away. They're, and it, those guys, I mean, people around Austin know them, but they're just, they're good guys. They're doing yeah. it for the right reasons. They want, to get these guys, you know, NIL money, but they're also going to invest in the community. So it's a, it's a wonderful idea that is really a win-win. Um, and you've got people that support people support athletics through money donations to the university. And it's, 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 they're, they're going to get a good mix between people donating to the university, also donating to NIL causes once people see the tangible benefit of it. Now, the flip side is with all the money going around, the question is going to be, where does the market settle? This yeah. is for really the big, we're going to pay to get XYZ receiver to come to whatever college. That's where are people really making, is that worth it to them? But it's capitalism at its finest. It it really is. Is. That's why I don't understand if people would just open, it's like politics. Yeah. People would open up, listen to both sides and really get a better understanding of this in particular. Then everyone would be on board. Yeah. Maybe we should stories inside the man games should just shift to a straight political discussion. That would be really, really beneficial. I think we need to do that next installment. Uh, talk about some hot topics right now yeah. about, well, well, this. You froze. It is probably a good thing. So uh, for those of you who uh, have followed Wills, um, 
He's tied to UT Athletics. He is a buddy of Chris Del Conte, um, kind of. But it, it, uh, a trip really bonded those two, a certain uh, men's NCAA tournament trip. Uh, they drove from Austin all the way up to Wisconsin. Well, there was a certain tweet, and I, and I got excited, Wills, because I, I thought that this was going to be the sequel of the CDC Wills road trip. So I laughed. I'm, I'm sure everyone did. Give the backstory, and I know this was just a joke because it was sure. Chad, Chad Osterman in the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. Yeah, the well, so he, he was laughing about he he tweeted that to Cat about picking her up, uh, but we did. That is true. We did get pulled over in Oklahoma. I mean, I can't remember what we were doing, but we were going around something or. That whole ride through Oklahoma was, it wasn't up 35. I mean, it was literally small town in Oklahoma, stop, hit the, you know, red light, red light, get through it. You're on the highway, red light, red light, next town. So there was all kinds of speed limit changes. Anyway, <laughs> he got pulled over and the cops, you know, like, do you know how fast you were going? And Bill kind of just kind of like, oh, yeah. he didn't even really say anything. He just kind of pointed at the at his, you know, display. And, it, and of course, he was stopped. And I was like, afterwards, I was like, what are you, what were you doing? You're pointing at the display. He's like, ah, he's like, I have no idea how fast I was going. I was just trying to, like, the trooper was going to look. And I don't know if the trooper knew him or not, but he's like, Keep it going, or whatever he said, and let us go. Yeah, uh, the women's college World series. Cat, he's up there. Cat Osterman. Yep. Texas, Oklahoma, and, o and OSU are all in OKC, and that's one. Of, listen, one of my favorite events that I learned that I really love when I was working in OKC at Hall of Fame Stadium. The women's college World series, honestly, was one of my favorite events. Yeah, you know what's funny? They um. They have great attendance, great support for that. Yeah. And not to bash OU, but their men's baseball attendance is terrible. Awful. And but that that what's funny is this the you know, I owe you so good in women's softball, but yeah. oh. somebody there was like a thing on Twitter with all these games, Texas when they won, and it's it's been on ESPN. People really watching it and enjoying it, and I I love one of my favorite coaches at UT is Mike White. Yeah, I mean, the shooting the finger. Okay, he shouldn't have done it, but I mean we've all funny. we've all been there, right? He I mean, you've him. always been at a game where the umps and everything, and people are on you, and that's your desired response. I'm with him. He's a fan's type of guy. He's a guy's guy. I, I, when I saw that, I thought, that is Kiwi energy right there, okay? New, New Zealand. Zealander. Yep, New Zealand. I bet he could play some Australian rules. A hundred percent. That's yeah. a big fella. A hundred percent. He's pretty uh, great. So, great week uh, for those who are Longhorn fans. First, you have Kite. Crenshaw, they won a national title. Yep. Spieth and that crew, um, they won a national title. Now this group. And then we got, uh, you know, some really big-time up-and-comers coming into the golf program, yeah. uh, Texas. But a fourth national championship. Did yeah. you did, did you expect this from this group? Well, it's funny. I talked to Steve Tremere, who's the GM at UT Golf Club, played at Texas, and he's always there in fields, you know, He's not yeah. a coach, but he's always there. And he said, now, Tremere always will, is confident, but he said they're going to win it. I promise you they're going to wow. win it. Coach Fields is about a, as good a guy as you could come Oh, golden. He's a humble, sweet man. I mean, the best. He's got the perfect temperament for a college golf coach because – you know, all those guys coming in have their own swing coach. They have their own. Right. But he gets those guys in a mode to play, to play. Okay, we're playing stroke play. We're playing match play. Here's how you – he's just a great college coach. 
He's exactly what you'd want. So this team, they said it on the broadcast, and I guess it didn't resonate with me enough that the Cootie brothers and Hammer were seniors. First of all, they'd gone through COVID. They'd had these things happen, and they'd gotten close to winning it, which I knew that, but I didn't. it didn't fully – the maturity of those guys, and you saw it. I mean, they – they just grinded through yeah. each one of those matches. And I, t- I was telling somebody, I I watched way back when, when Spieth and them did it, and I remember being nervous. But the way that that plays out in a match play format, I mean, is just it, – it, it, it's un- so underrated, the dramatic – the dramatics of that. That a national title can go down to a ball rolling off a green and two matches. Fl- I mean, it's just I, I was uh, I screamed at my family. Somebody knocked the TV off. It was <laughs> I, I decided I don't know if that was worth it, but I was really into that one. <laughs> but I'm so glad for Coach Fields. I'm so glad for the Cootie brothers. And speaking of, you've got next year. Keaton Vaux from Anderson High School, the 5A state champ. He is a phenomenal golfer, and he's going to play a lot yeah. for Texas next year. So we are efforting. Keaton touched, texted with his dad. Yeah. Trying to get Keaton on the podcast here. Um, yeah. And then they have he has an older brother that I think he plays at Auburn. Yeah. Um, and that's just a golf family. So it's really – absolutely phenomenal yeah the, the roots there and uh, you're right it's it's going to be fun to watch texas golf and i think he's got fields has got something rolling for a long oh, 100%. time um, i couldn't wait for this topic okay um so the ag texas a m ad ross bjork he says the ut a m football rivalry will resume in college station in 24 25 so this guy, to me, Wills, he's he's all about clickbait. He knows where it, what's going to be tweeted. He he, it's like this emotional reaction to. You've seen his track record. Yes. So I mean, uh, let, let's go back. Let's rewind. Is it? Do you think it's because he wasn't an Aggie before he was there? Is it because he's down there and he's playing to his? I mean. When Texas, it was announced by a that yeah. Texas was about to join this, did he honestly think, I mean, the world, literally the world turned and laughed at him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. And so he does something like this and, okay, here's my issue, my man. Fine. What's going to, what he is basically, the minute he said that, I thought, we're going to go there and win. It just Texas will be there's it is so aggy in their whole history. Sorry, to, this is hot, hot take. But to do something like this, I mean, Texas would never. Well, we're going to play them here. I, oh, I mean, who cares, dude? I mean, whatever. But to pound his chest, pound his chest and then to lose. I don't get it. I don't either. It's so, just so little. I mean, you get made fun of for being a little brother saying that and acting like, will we join? Okay, you're just announcing to the world yet again, you are a little brother. Seriously. It, so it is. It's like a syndrome. I mean, yeah. So why can't it? And it's almost to add to that. It's almost like. Having don't you want to be first? You got to, it's like the right. the media. The, the media. Yeah. You got to go out and tweet something. That's right. What 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 benefit do you have? None. Just, just say, sure. wait for the SEC to release. Exactly. It. Take the high road. I mean, just whatever. We're excited. It's fun. But he can't do it. This goes to prove the college football news cycle is year round. Oh, 100 percent Saban. Yeah. Jimbo. Again, yep. AM was involved in it. Um, of course. 
So speaking of that, a Big 12 member, um, have you ever seen a West University of West Virginia yeah. graduation? Well, no, but I've I've seen them do it. And, of course, I went to that game when we beat them the first time we played up there. And, of course, yeah. they, they didn't really sing it because we beat them. But yeah. it is pretty fun. But yeah. show it. I want to see it. I've never seen it at graduation. Well, this is a, one of the smaller school – well, obviously, school – one of the school – I think it's one of the medical school, pre-med school okay. on the campus. Listen, I've heard it there. I've heard it elsewhere. It is fun. It gets, it, it's – it's pretty cool. There's state pride. Yeah. But yeah. here it was recently at there. I, I want to say pre-med. I may be wrong. I, I This was on Reddit of all places. Here we go. Okay. Really cool, actually. Pretty neat. Pretty it neat. Makes, it makes it more personable. Have all the graduates turn around. Let's go one last time. You're a mountaineer for life. Let me tell you something. There's a medical school graduation must be different. I'm not saying I want those West Virginia people to operate on me, but <laughs> I never forget being at the my UT graduation. My parents made me go, and it was just the one where whoever, I think, Bush was governor and he talked, but somebody down the road, like getting ready to pop champagne. And I went, what? This is the worst moment in my life. Graduating college. Like I never want to graduate college. I want to be here forever. What are you celebrating that you're going to go try to get a job making $17,000 a year? Yeah. It's just awful. Anyway. That's neither here nor there, but that is college graduation is overrated because your life is over. Yeah. And you're you true fun. Seriously. Gone. That's right. So I got to, you know what time it is. This is uh we're going to make this one really short, but you know, we got to give our love to the people who create products, which really help us men stay trim and clean. <laughs> Hey, Wills, this is uh, – so Manscaped.com, uh, they do a phenomenal job of evolving and pushing out new products. Pretty good. I don't know if you're a user, but I always try to get, you know, our VIP guest and your uh, co-host of a segment. But this is their new products right here. It's a new package. Love it. The Ultra Smooth Package. I love it. Shaving care for down there. So – if they still want to coach Mo and not me, I'm going to be doubly furious. You need to get Coach Mo's, and we still got to work on that. So this this is my favorite part, the little razor. You don't need a long ra- – length isn't always good for everything. Uh, it depends on what you're packing. Exactly, you know. So it, it begins with the crop exfoliator. Gentle exfoliant for the groin area. Then step two – the clear growing shaving gel, lubricating <laughs> and moisturizing. We got, I know you can't smell it, but yes, just a clean, manly scent. I would it it's it's like a fine mahogany, yes, and your personal pheromones having a marriage. Agreed, that's exactly what it is. Um, so we need to talk to Coach Mo. And I just need to talk to Manscaped.com. We've got to get Will yeah. on board of the product review train. A hundred percent. What do you think? Is that something you would use? A hundred percent I'd use it. How often? Is it once a week? Would it be a twice a week? It depends. I mean, uh, if it feels good and it, you know, you, yeah, ultra smooth. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. So for those of you at home, Go to manscaped.com, get the ultra smooth package here. And their delivery, they don't use excuses such as the overused excuse being the supply chain. 
That's not mm-hmm. a problem with Manscaped.com. No. Manscaped 20. All one word. Wonderful. And that's your promo code. Hey, this part, I've been wanting to show you this for a while. This is, uh, we're going to show you the guy who sponsors this next segment. He likes to sell homes. Hey, y'all, Kevin Hutchison here with Realty Austin, and I am grateful to be a part of Stories Inside the Man Cave, a homegrown podcast just like my own business. Okay, TikToking in the Man Cave. Okay. I can't remember, Wills. Are you on TikTok like your kiddos? I mean, I just watch it. Uh, and I, I look every once in a while, and on my TikTok account, one of my kids has done a video that I had no idea was on there. But they, yes, I, I, I will. I never watch it except to go like my kids' photos. Yeah. Or videos. Well, yeah. your son, that your oldest, I think it's your oldest one, right? Your son is second oldest. Yeah. Second oldest. He's quite a character. We follow each other on Instagram, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. He does. He'll, what those kids do, I can't, it's so weird. They'll, on Instagram, they'll post something and then you go back like four months later and it's gone. But yeah. I'll tell you one quick funny story if we have time. Yeah. We went, we were playing in this Westlake League seven on seven. That's where you may have seen his latest one where he's wearing the full yeah. mask. Okay. So he still wears that in seven on seven. And I looked. He plays linebacker in seven on seven. And I went out there and I saw the varsity Trojan team and Ivy Webb has full. And I was like, okay, but we were playing and we played Westlake has like four or five teams from their middle school. Of course they do. And we beat one of them and beat another one. And so Hodges just posted that picture of it, whatever. Well, the, one of the, our quarterbacks posted one And he kind of made a comment like, you know, I can't remember what he said. Something about beating Westlake. Well, you look down and there was 90 comments. And so all these eighth grade boys are like, bro, you don't even know. We whipped your ass. Wow. What about the regular season? I mean, it was hilarious. And then I can't remember what happened, but that he took the quarterback took it down. But how'd you still has it up? But yes, I watch TikTok. I, I, I got to go back and see that Hodges. I don't know where he learned it from, but I think it was some other male in his house. That, uh, yes, I never. His, uh, I would never. I would never look at me anything ever. Ever. This is this part right here. This is one of my favorite TikToks. I want to pardon the language for those of you who are easily offended. This is a, I've shown it once on a prior episode, but not with Will's on um, idle conversation with Wills. Let's just say this man's daughter's boyfriend will go fishing with him, but the ki- the guy does not want to remove the fish from the line. And his girlfriend's dad, he's had enough of it. But he still go fishing with him and nothing lying, changed. Man, I, yeah. I don't know how the hell my daughter get a punk for a goddamn boyfriend. I want to fish, but he won't even take the goddamn fish out of it. Fucking pole, it's a croaker. Ain't gonna bite his ass, just grab the motherfucker. He's scared. <laughs> motherfucker, it, pop a Kool Aid. Nah, cause look, I touched it and it started wagging. It's around gonna move, motherfucker, it's lying. <laughs> so, what we do, use it for bait now? Yeah, no, nah, you. Do you think that's the mom videoing it or the girlfriend? I think it's the girlfriend. Oh my gosh, she loves her boyfriend. That's so good. That guy's just like, fuck, what do I do? So good. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, so good. He says, grab that fish. Yeah. Oh, he's so pissed. He's all waving around. Uh, uh, and my friend's alive. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flop. It's going to move. Oh, it's so good. But. Have you ever had a catfish barb go into your hand when you try to remove it? That's how you learn real quick. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, I mean, I've had barbs, but not one of those ca- those catfish ones. Woo! Brutal. Don't do it to a hardhead catfish on the coast. No. No. Brutal. You'll be in the um, Modern Mercy Center pretty quick. Agreed. Agreed. Nice. Hey, parting thoughts from a guy here. 
and then truthfully, I miss this dude. Well, you, you want my? Are you going to do parting thoughts first, or would you like me to? I, I'll go first. I'll just oh. say, I'll just say parting thoughts. Hey, college baseball, give it a chance, and go support our guys at uh, Occupy Left Field Foundation. And if you're an Aggie. You jump on board of those of their organizations. College baseball needs more infusion of investment, not only fan support, but financially. Because these guys, listen, baseball is an an expensive sport nowadays. You need to infuse the money into it. Eleven point seven scholarships is so archaic. Whenever, whoever, if it's NCAA, whatever, we got to figure out a way where it can be financially equitable to allow five, at least five more scholarships. I just don't know if programs like my alma mater, Stephen F., their baseball program can fund because they – just smaller Division One schools, they don't all have the – yeah. and, you know, because Division Two, I don't know what the scholarships are like there for their program. Yeah. But, well, uh, and it's – there's Title Nine issues and stuff. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But I, I think my parting comment would be I agree with all that – it is a really good time to be a fan of the Texas Longhorns. It this is. spring has been incredible, and it's going to – we'll see how football goes. But, I mean, the run, track and field, baseball, softball, golf, tennis, rowing, you name it, boy, they are – I mean, volleyball, basketball, both basketball. Both. Yeah. Football is going to be, I think there. it's going to be a good, we'll talk about it, but I think it's going to be a good run. We're, we're in it. I think we've got the right coaches. It's going to be fun. Everything's speaking alive. Of, speaking of coaches, have you had Coach Hatcher on? No, I have not, but I love that guy. He's great. He, he We're talking about the Anderson High School new athletic director. Head here in coach. Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. He's pretty great. He's got a good energy, and I know it's not credit to him, but it's been fun that he came in in January and they won state in both golfs, won state in lacrosse. It's just a fun time to be in Austin. It is. It's all over Austin. If we just quit making everything political and we get everybody huh. on board, man, to get marriage to sports with the, the beautiful life that is provided by – Living in Austin, Texas. That's right. Man, I'm glad we live here. Agreed. Northwest Hills is a fine place from what I hear. It's a fine place. It I'm is. Support local business. Correct. Support stories inside the man cave. And go watch Wills' his kids play baseball and whatever else they play. Correct. Hey, buddy. Enjoy it. I enjoyed it, man. You got, you, you're got always working. You're, I want to get in my Mac Brown persona. You do great for the kids. You always help out the kids. You're developing young minds. Wills, much love. Much love. Have a good weekend.